Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Trek Gamer Telecom video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. Has the specifications and pricing, along with the release date of the GTX 1180, leaked early thanks to a Vietnamese e-tailer? Well, a number of you have asked my opinions on this, so we're going to be going through the entire listing and going through the evidence and my opinions of it. As usual, feel free to share your opinions down below in the comments. So we're going to start things out with the price point as well as the release date. The release date for these cards from this listing is the end of September. In my opinion, that's probably okay-ish considering that NVIDIA are most likely going to be doing an unveiling of these cards from what we're hearing to the press at Gamescon, and considering we're hearing so many delays and wanting to get rid of all of those excess GPUs built up because of mining, I can definitely understand NVIDIA wanting to delay the cards until about that date, and honestly, I wouldn't even be surprised if it's a little later than the end of September, but that, you know, by the by, uh, it makes sense in terms of release date. The pricing is really expensive, however, $1,530 US dollars if you do a currency conversion. That's a significant chunk of change. This is not the first time we've heard that the 1180 is going to be really expensive. There have been those rumours that have popped up in the past. Of course, there is no exact confirmation from NVIDIA that this is going to be the case. To put it to any level of context, the 1180 would cost about 1500 US dollars and that is 500 US dollars more expensive than what you would cough up for the 1080 Ti slash Ti. So that's a lot more money, that's considerably more money. We also see that it is using the Turing architecture, it's using GT104. That makes sense to me. Uh, after all, Turing has been hinted at by Nvidia, we've discussed that umpteen in one time so I'm not going to go over it again. In my opinion, uh, Turing is going to be a derivative of Volta. Most likely we're going to be looking at double precision, considerably scaled back, possibly the absence of um, tensor cores, but that's unknown at the moment because of NVIDIA pushing ray tracing and RTX technology. So it's possible they might make tweaks to those so they don't uh, impact, uh, let's say, the Titan Vs, or they might just decide to remove them entirely, or they might just scale them back. So for example, they might have a half the number of them or a quarter of the number of them or whatever that they feel would not necessarily be enough to run high performance computing tasks, but would be enough for ray tracing without major performance impact on the CUDA cores rather than going through the software way of running them through CUDA cores as normal or how ray tracing would normally run. De unless you've got dedicated hardware essentially to run ray tracing, it would run on the shaders of the GPU. In uh, NVIDIA, of course, for the Volta architecture can use tensor cores, but for AMD, they're using asynchronous compute engines and that schedules it on the shaders. But with the SuperSIMD architecture, that might be a bit different, but we'll tackle that in another upcoming video. Well, I, I have gone into some level of detail on it on a previous video, so if you want that information, you can click on it. But anyway, uh, that's kind of getting off topic. So, what about the actual specifications of these cards? Well, we're looking at 3,584 CUDA cores. To put that into, uh, once again, context, the Titan V um, is 5,120 to its name. So, yeah, you can kind of see how that would make some sense. After all, the Titan V is considerably more expensive. So, the number of CUDA cores, yep, okay, I can get on board with that. It's using GDDR6 memory, I can certainly get on board with that. HBM2, even AMD at this point don't seem to be too keen on putting it out for gaming cards. That's supposedly why RX Vega 7nm gaming is not going to be a thing, because AMD just feel that the card is just bumped up too much in price because of HBM2. And we've heard so many rumours about that, so yeah, I can definitely understand NVIDIA just deciding to go with whatever bus width and GDDR6. And of course, we've heard um, the various memory manufacturers all kind of ramping up GDDR6 production for the next generation of GPUs from AMD and NVIDIA anyway, so that all ties together rather nicely. My concern, however, is the actual amount of memory and memory bus concerning other, compared to other leaks. So we're looking at 256-bit memory bus, which is not necessarily out of the question. After all, 
that would be the same bus width as, let's say, the oh, GP104, in other words, uh, the 1080. But 16 gigabytes of memory, that is a bit dubious to me. Um, it, just because of the sheer quantity. I'm not necessarily sure at this point that we need that amount of RAM on that card because then it makes me wonder what we're going to get for the TI. Now, don't forget the TIs are typically released around the midpoint of a generation, sometimes a little earlier, sometimes a little later, but generally around halfway through. So we've got the uh, amount of memory plus the memory bus width. Now, from the leaked PCB that we saw, the engineering board, that appeared to have a 384-bit memory bus, and it appeared to have 12 gigabytes of memory. Of course, we don't know what that PCB is for. For all we know, it could have just been them screwing around. It could have been a product that's never going to be launched. It could be a product for the data center. It could be a prototype board that they're like, eh, actually, no, this is just too expensive. We're going to change that. There's a dozen, there's a dozen different things, you know, and dozen different reasons of why that's going to be a kind of an issue. So it's the quantity of RAM, given what we know about GDDR6 specifications, but also it's just a lot of RAM and it could kick up the price of the board quite a bit. And I just don't know if that quantity of RAM is required. There is also some questions regarding the legitimacy of the box or box is and artwork that we've seen on the retailer's website. Honestly, this is not a particularly important fact because the product hasn't been released yet. Uh, so therefore it's possible that the retailer is just like, you know what, you, um, you in marketing, you need to create us those images for the card and then when we get them from the manufacturers, we'll change those later. But you can definitely tell that those images are doctored from 1080 boxes, particularly the Asus model, and even the 1180 Ti that we see uh, at the product placement over the 11 series in the website, it doesn't look genuine. It looks a little off. There's a little, if you just look at the letters, the, the spacing of the letters, it just, it just doesn't look a hundred percent. It just looks a smidgen off to me. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's fake. That just means that someone in their marketing department or in their web, web department or what have you, just didn't have those images yet to hand and they had to create them. It's not a big deal. And if you've been, uh, if you've ever worked on a retailer website, you've probably had to do similar to be totally honest with you. The, the big problem I have with this Odyssey is the memory. The fact that from what we understand, GDDR6 is going to be available in just one gigabyte capacity at the start. And that does not make sense given the bus width we're looking at here. So yes, if you've got a 384 bit memory bus and you divide that by 32, and then obviously you've got the capacity of 12, which is the number of uh, GDDR, uh, GDDR6 chips that would uh, take to create 12 gigabytes of RAM. That makes sense. But with this, it just doesn't. And yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, it's possible we could be looking at two gigabyte capacity or something else going on. Do I think this is genuine or not? Well, it's really hard to know, to be totally honest with you. My personal opinion is that it's unlikely to be accurate. It's possible, however, that we might see the release date at the very least being kind of accurate. Um, as in like around that period, I, I personally do believe that we're not going to be looking at these cards launched any earlier than mid-September. That's my personal opinion. I think it's going to be September, October, possibly November at the very latest, but most likely September, October's time we see those GPUs. On the other hand, I could be totally and utterly wrong and they could appear on store shelves tomorrow. We just don't really know. But the number of CUDA calls does roughly seem right to me, possibly a little more than that. I wouldn't be surprised if we're looking at the mid low 3000 to the high 3000 mark. So let's say 38, um, 3840 or, you know, the 3584 that we see here. That definitely does appear right to me. The Turing architecture almost certainly is correct, but the memory is, mm, I'm unsure about and the pricing does seem really high. With that said, there have once again been those rumors previously. My personal opinion, probably fake. Um, but you can't be 100% sure because we don't honestly know the specifications. The main thing that's putting me off, however, is we did see that leaked PCB shot, but once again, we can't be 100% 
certain that that PCB was really an 1180. It could have been anything for all we know. Heck, to be honest, it could have just been someone screwing around at NVIDIA and ultimately it didn't even have half the connections. It didn't even have the GPU uh, in place, remember. It was just a blank PCB with memory um, attached and all that stuff. So, you know, it's it's kind of difficult to tell. While we're at it and talking about leaks, let's move over to the Ryzen 3 2300X. So this chip, as you would expect, is a replacement of the Ryzen 3 1300X. And specification-wise, it's very similar, but of course with a, cu a few uh, key differences in regards to the clock speeds. So let's start out with the clock speeds, then we'll go into a couple of benchmarks that have leaked once again from Chip Hell. So in terms of specifications, we're looking at four cores. So in terms of specifications, we're looking at four cores, four threads, so no SMT, 3.5 gigahertz and 4.2 gigahertz for the base and turbo respectively. A TDP appears to be 65 watts. Now, on top of that, of course, we have some performance results. And what type of results are we looking at? Well, I'm glad you asked, my friends. Single thread performance is 508.9 with multi core performance of 2020.6, that is using, of course, CPU-Z. Whereas, on the other hand, uh, we only have a multi-thread performance of uh, Cinebench R15, but you're looking at 690 points. So that is obviously a, a roughly half of what you would get from, let's say, a Ryzen 5 1600 or 2600. That doesn't make sense considering it does not have SMT and it does not have those additional cores available to it. You might recall that there were a couple of um, press leaks uh, a few days ago. The first, of course, was NVIDIA and Gamescon, and the second was AMD apparently also sending out press invitations. Well, an update to this does appear to be that press are going to be invited to an event which would be seeing them uh, come to a Ferrari manufacturing facility. So it would appear that uh, the press will be invited to go to a Mondeo uh, Ferrari manufacturing facility and also be part of the uh, Ryzen, um, sorry, Fred Ripper 2000 launch. It does make sense, honestly, and if you take nothing else from the story other than, oh, that's kind of cool, do think to yourself, well, it's a demonstration that AMD now have more disposable income. The marketing budget has gone up, and it definitely shows to me. Not only are they being a lot more aggressive and putting on more fabulous and grandiose conferences, but of course then you've got events like this and they're able to do a lot more sponsorships. And because of that, it means that they're thrust more into the limelight. That's always a positive thing. So from a tech enthusiast point of view like myself and a gamer as well, I just want the best products for my cash and AMD having more disposable income to put out their marketing and to get a bigger market share just pushes Intel of course to put out better products as well and all of that is just excellent news for us. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, comment and subscribe. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.